the Joe Rogan experience? I uh, I started my immigration process when he got elected. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 been a trip, you know. I, How does that work? Like, if you are a Mexican-born citizen and you want to become a United States citizen, it, obviously it's very difficult. It, 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 so, married to an American, have an American kid. That's how I went through the process myself. And, uh, you know, I got a green card. Um, the, the thing is that when he got elected, everybody said, you know what? Maybe our time to get a green card is going to be less and less, so let's all try and get one. Mm. So what would take normally six months took two years oh uh, wow so in those two years you can't leave the country so if you but what, what happens to people that are illegal over that's what's fucked up about it right it's like there's people that came over here illegally 20 30 years ago and they've done no crimes they've been an integral part of society they've had great lives but they they can't pay taxes they can't vote they have to live undercover yeah, it's I mean, fuck, they're, they're stupid. They're, they're, uh, you know, they, and they do provide, you know, they do yes. provide. They pay taxes through other, well, other through sales tax, yeah. buying things, but they're not paying taxes. They're not, but if you made them citizens, you would make money. Yeah, well, but, it's not a popular view. It's a stupid view. Yeah, it's, and, a, it's, a, it's stupid that we have <coughs> these people and they're permanent illegals. Yeah, and they will be here until they die yeah. illegally, and we know they're here. Like. How about work with what you've got? Look, you've already do you doing your best to stop the border traffic? Great, fantastic. But listen, let's just forget about the past. These people are here; they're here, and they're a part of our community. Like, how are you how are you going to deny them citizenship till the day they die, and they're still here? Well, legal immigration, just like I went through, is hard enough. Yeah, you got to find some American lady. <laughs> That's just difficult. Uh, yeah, well, I, 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 <laughs> you I got lucky. Yeah, you know, you know, I did. You know, and uh, I, you know, but. It it was a hard process. Uh, it's a uh, it's 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 a difficult process. To and you legally. speak fluent English. I yes, that's another thing. I yeah. saw people in the line with me, uh, you know, that did not speak a lick of English, mm. but they were from a country that had a quota. And uh, they're great, they're fine, like you know. Holland or some shit. From a yeah. country that has a quota, yeah. so they're great. But you, you're not, you're not. You're, it's you're, hard for Canadians, man. I have friends from Canada that have come over here to try to become citizens. Yeah. It's a fucking grind. Yeah, I, I, and, and, and don't get me wrong. I love this country. I, I've been, I'm new here, and I like what I see. I don't like where it's going in some places. What don't you like? Uh, I don't like uh, the uh, – I mean, I left my country because I couldn't defend myself from the bad people out there. The Second Amendment thing. Second things. Amendment is yeah. it's a beautiful thing. You have no idea how beautiful that thing is until you don't have an option to have it. That's one thing. Uh I like the opportunities this country provides. I've had a lot of opportunities I would never get anywhere else. I like that you can actually work, and work. You, the work you put in matters here. Um, I like uh, I like how it's segmented and different. You go go to Tennessee, and you meet people out there, and they're great people. You know, there's some you know people have preconceived notions of what some part of the countries are, but I've loved it. And then you go to California, and you meet people that are on the same boat as I was, and they forgot completely what Mexico is, and they're completely bad. Americanized. Americanized, and they're completely against you as a new as a new person here. Really? Yeah. So you find that re- like Americanized Mexicans, or, or or like second, third generation Mexicans, the worst enemy of a Mexican is another Mexican. That's a classic. What? That's a classic. Uh, that's a classic Mexican saying, and it's true. Most that, that's a classic Mexican saying. The, really? Most of the negativity, te- negativity I got from being on your show the first time was from Latinos, specifically Mexican Latinos. What was the negativity? What was their criticism? Uh, when I talked about how Mexicans protested the caravans going through Tijuana and wrecking their city. That was viewed as an extreme to the right or conservative viewpoint, apparently. Yeah, but that was a fact. But yeah, the, apparently facts don't matter. Oh, that's so silly. But that's people. That's that's a good. That's a good example of people that are not there. Yeah, yeah. That are talking about it. You're not say, You didn't make a value judgment saying that those people coming through were protested by Mexicans and need to go back to wherever fucking rice paddy they come from. You didn't say any of that. No. So, so this is what I saw when I when I talked about it uh, because I experienced it. I was in uh, I was in TJ for a while when that was happening. Byron Caravan goes through. Obviously, a lot of those guys were 
gang members. A lot of them were, not all of them, a lot of them were covered in tattoos. It was pretty hot outside, wearing all of our important hoodies. Cameras came by. The females and the children would be in putting front parade in front of the media. To anybody who was there, you could see the circus that was going on. Mm. And then uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, camp encampments they would they would you know litter the encampments with needles on the outside. One of them was next to a school that had to be closed down. A niece of mine had a kid in there, and the school had to be closed down because it was next to one of these encampments. They would protest and close down lanes. Most people that live in TJ, uh, some of them are Americans and they commute. So that's affecting their livelihood. Yeah, uh, people that work on tourism and, and TJ livelihood went down. So the fact that these people came in and disrupted all that whole thing, and then you would see these uh, Californian, you know, hippie American guys come down there and do puppet shows for these people, and hand over uh, donations in the form of canned food, blankets, and stuff like that. And then you would see these guys go to the back door and sell all that stuff in the back and just get money for whatever they were going to use the money for. <sighs> We would laugh at it, but it also, you know, it's pretty disheartening. Having that point of view online, because I started posting some of this stuff online for people, this is what's happening. And that was like, no, 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 you're going against the, uh, the narrative. The narrative, yeah. The yeah. narrative and the, and the people that are talking about you going against the narrative have really no idea. They don't care about the truth. That's what's crazy. Uh, the absolute is, uh, thing. So if you're, against the, if you're against this caravan going through Tijuana and affecting your, you're probably a Trump supporter. That's, that's and I'm like. So I, simple. I can't even vote up here yet. You don't have to be a full <laughs> citizen to vote so that it doesn't even factor in on the. <sighs> God damn, it's so crazy. What else about America bothers you? <laughs> uh, I think uh, you know, there's, there's definitely this tendency in America that I see the youth in America. Like I, uh, like, um, I, have, I have a weird mental comparison of seeing my nephews down there playing soccer. Um, going out and getting into trouble, uh, going to cockfights, which is probably pretty dangerous, but they go to cockfights, stuff like that. And I see kids up here on their tablet, you know. Playing games, playing video game, games. Uh, getting offended by something, you know. Down there, you can still punch somebody in the face if they get into your face in school. Up you're here, allowed to do that in school? I mean, you, you, there's, there's, you're going to be some issues, but it's fine, you know. You know there's, there's still that, you know. Up here, it's gone. All that's gone. You're going to get into some issues. You're probably going to get out of school or something. You know, you see this weird... You know, Pussification of American children. Safe spaces. Yeah. You know, don't say that. That's politically incorrect. Pussification? I don't know. Yeah. What's a good word for it? What's the politi Come up with a politically correct word for that that has just as much kick, and I'll use that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they can't. It doesn't exist. It, it's the pussification. Yeah. I mean, and, and when I came up here, the, like the first year I was up here... Uh, I saw the California gun laws change. Like I got to see the weird California compliant rifles come to the range, and you have to push a button to release the magazine. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, and make it more difficult to reload. Yeah, so strange. Well, I mean, if 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 uh, I've never seen a California compliant gun in the hands of a criminal myself. Right, so why why are the good like the good citizens following the law? Yeah, the idea that you're just going <coughs> to handicap law-abiding citizens, and that's going to somehow or another save lives in mass shootings. <sighs> and yeah. here's a, the other thing about you, and I, I'm waiting for this to happen, but it's just not happening. They're never addressing people using psychotropic drugs. They're not. They don't address that. All those school shooters. All those mass shooters are all on drugs. Yeah. They're all on some kind of psych drugs. And there's there's no mention of it whatsoever. Like, what what is the action of these things? It's all about the guns. Yeah. And the guns are a, a huge issue. I mean, the fact that these people who they are fucked access. up, and, yeah, they, that they have access and they can get access to these guns and they can wind up shooting people. Yes, that is one issue. Security is another issue. There's another issue, and that's mental health, and that's the, that to me is the biggest one because without the mental health issue, you don't get mass shooters. Yeah, and, and that's an interesting thing we t when I get people in conversations about the violence in Mexico, and per, per, uh, you know perspective. Mexico cartel guys, you know, go into a town and shoot up a bunch of people, and it's pretty horrible. Uh, but on the Mexican side, we only had one school shooting, uh, that like a notable one, right? And it was mentally ill kid when yeah. he took a gun to school, right. And our, uh, as Mexicans, we look at what happens in the U.S. in schools, and we're horrified by it. That's like completely, you know, horrific. 
Isn't that uh, amazing? It's in, um, again being on both sides. I'm just trying to figure things. What about pharmaceuticals being prescribed to children in Mexico? Is it similar? Not at all. Not, not at, I mean, we, we're so behind in some in some instances as far as you know. A, I didn't know about PTSD so I came up here or or TBI. Right. Really? Yeah, I didn't know anything about that. When talking. did you learn about TBI? Uh, when I started talking Tra about We should say what that is. Uh, Post traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injuries yeah. for people like I, I learned about kids. It, I learned about it from talking to most of my marine friends that were coming back from they're like head like what you're describing that you're feeling sounds like TBI. Really? Yeah. You should get yourself checked out. And then you go down there and it's like, ah, oh, you know, things would happen and people would get, you know, you know just drink, get a few days off, take a few shots of tequila, you're fine. You know? <laughs> get back at it. <laughs> well, that's the old school mentality. I mean, that's what they had uh, to deal with in World War II and Vietnam. And yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, you've got, I mean, when it comes to that, but mental health down in Mexico, there's like, it's not, it's not anywhere as far as medicating it, kids. Being diagnosed with things like autism, autism is a thing that I only recently kind of heard about know, 15 years ago. In Mexico? In Mexico. And what about um, antipsychotic <coughs> drugs and all these different drugs that you're seeing that these a lot of these school shooters are taking? Yeah. In Mexico, it's not a thing. Uh, you know, people think that it's pretty permissive in Mexico. They can get any drug if you pay somebody off. The thing is that a lot of these uh, psychiatric level they're they're not they're not available down there or people there you can go to and they're like what do you want no this this is not available here so it's not a part of the culture like it's it not is in a America part, no no yeah in America it's such a huge part of the culture that people want that it, people are constantly wanting to take something to take the edge off or take something so they could feel better or take something to you know to just to, just to alter their state, and the doctor will prescribe it to them. Yeah. And then the pharmaceutical drug companies are just raking in the cash from it, so it just becomes a part of reality. Yeah. <laughs>